Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, unit 5, lesson 12, and we're going to be looking at part 2. Currently we're on part 1, just so we can see how this app works. So if I click run, and click get forecast, we can see that it pulls up data information for a city, specifically this is Green Bay. We have the highs, we have the lows for the city. We have an icon displaying what the weather condition is going to be. And this is all according to the app, what tomorrow's weather is going to be. Let's go on and move on to part two. It says to build the random forecast app, which tells you the weather for tomorrow. Using the activity guide to help you plan, when you're done, submit your work. If you haven't taken a moment to look at the activity guide, I want to encourage you to do so, so that you can get some of your planning thoughts down before you actually start building the app. Before we begin, we're going to go ahead and pull some data from a table. So let's see what we have. If I click the data tab. I can see that we have daily weather. And within this table, I have things like states and cities. We're going to be focusing on the column for cities. And if I look here at Alaska for Anchorage, I can see that I have five different entries for this. We're thinking about the future. So this is one day out, two days out and three days out, etc. I can see that this data is actually a little bit old just because today is the 29th and it's showing me Thursday's data. Even though this is going to display old information, we're still going to want to use this number specifically looking at number one and not caring about days two through five. We have condition description. We're going to use this within the app. We're also going to use this icon link and that'll populate over here. And we're also going to use our low and high temperatures. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create six different variables. Those variables are going to be used to store information from that table. The variables that we need are going to be for the cities, the forecast number, our icons, our highs, our lows, and the condition descriptions. So I'll go ahead and create those variables quickly. Now that we've created the variables, we need to assign a few values. So let's go to the data tab and we're going to use the get column. The table is going to be the same for each. So I'll quickly do that for all of them. We'll go ahead and comment out this code. The next thing we're going to do is create five more variables. This is so we can use these variables to filter out the data here and put the information that we need into a list. So let's go back to variables. We'll go ahead and add a comment in between just to kind of separate that out. And eventually we will separate this with a few returns to make it a little bit easier to read. We only have five variables that we're creating is because we don't actually need to filter out the forecast numbers list. We're actually just going to use that to compare within one of the functions that we're going to use. So we're creating a filtered list for the cities list, icons, highs, lows, and the conditions list. We're going to use the names that we have above. We're just going to add filtered in front of it. Our comment will just be filtered list. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an on click for our forecast button, which is this. Eventually, we're going to populate this with an update function, but in the meantime, we'll leave it empty. And then we have two different functions that we're going to create. We'll eventually comment out those functions. And now I'm going to go ahead and separate our app so that it's a little bit easier to look at. The first function that we're going to create, we're going to go ahead and call this filter. And what this is going to do is filter out the data that we have above based upon one criteria is the forecast number equal to one. 
to do this, we're going to go ahead and create a for loop. The for loop sets a variable i equal to zero. That's exactly what we need. We need to change this for. And what we're looking to do is look at the length of the cities list. So this for loop is going to run starting at zero. It's going to run through a specific set of commands. Each time it runs through, it's going to add one to the variable. And that's going to run until this criteria right here, I being less than the city's list length, it's no longer true. It's going to check out. So within this for loop, we're actually going to go ahead and create an if statement. This if is going to look at that variable that we created forecast number list. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that here. And what we're going to do is look at it at index I. So as it's going through this, it's going to look at that information. And what it's looking to do is to see, is that equal to exactly one? If that is, what we're going to do is we're going to append our filtered list here with the city, the icon, the highs, lows, and the conditions at that specific entry. If it's not, then we want to move on through the list until we get to the end. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the variables section. And I need five of these appends. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the names that I have above by selecting it and hitting control C on my keyboard. And then in the place I want to paste it, I'm going to do control V. The reason I'm doing this is to try and not misspell things by typing. And that's easy enough to do with the names that we have. All right, we're going to append all of these, but what are we going to append it with? We're going to use the variables that we created above at index I. And we'll do that for all of these, and these are going to correspond. So just a quick review on this. We've gone ahead and created a function. Within that function, we created a for loop. The for loop variable is set at i equals zero. It's going to compare the variable to the city's list length. And as long as that variable is less than the length of the list, it's going to run. Each time it runs, it's going to add one to the variable until that condition is no longer true. Within that for loop, what it's actually doing is it's doing an if statement to look to see is the forecast number list at the specific index, which is going to match up with the variable i, is that equal to 1? If it is, it's going to go ahead and add the information at that index into our filter list that we created. If not, it's just going to pass through the list and keep moving on. Let's go ahead and comment out this function. The function below is going to be used to update the screen when the forecast button is clicked. Code.org has been using the name update screen. So we'll continue using what they have used. Within this function, we need to go ahead and create a variable. This variable is going to be used to pull a random number and then use that as the selection for our random city. So we're going to the mass section. Our random number is going to be zero. And our max number is going to be the filtered cities list. Dot length. Minus one. And we do that minus one so that it doesn't go past the last indexed entry. This function is going to update all of these different sections within the app. So we need four set text and we also need one set image. For the IDs, if you're not sure, if you hover over the different sections, they have ID names. So the first one will be the city output and then we'll do the highs, the lows, the icon and the conditions. What we're going to populate on the screen is through our filtered list at that index that's randomly selected. So let's start here with filtered cities list. And I'll quickly run through the remaining ones.
we'll go ahead and comment out our code. The last thing that we need to do before we run the app is we actually need to call these functions. Our update screen is going to be called within the on click that we created before. Our function that we created called filter, that needs to be called before any on click is made so that it has data to pull from. And as I look over my identifiers over here, I can see that I missed some things, including misspelling update. These right here, I forgot to declare. We're just going to do open and close brackets. Let's go and run the app. As I run it, I can see that I missed selecting something here. So we're looking to pull the cities. So when I clicked run on the app, and I clicked get forecast before, it didn't work. I thought there was an issue with my code. This is actually the second time I've recorded this video to get the same result. I refreshed my page, then clicked through it again, and it was able to run. I've had issues with the databases and other projects. I think there might be some type of delay getting the information, and maybe code.org server might be having issues. So if you are confident that your code looks good and it's all there, maybe try refreshing your page or coming back to the site at a different time. Because I paused this video, didn't make any changes. Just again, refresh the screen and click run. And I was able to get the forecast. As always, I wanna encourage you, if you ran through this app with the help of the video, I wanna encourage you to go to the version history and reset it at default and rerun through this project just to make sure that you feel comfortable with using databases and creating lists with those databases and then extracting that information. Once you feel comfortable running through the project, make sure you click finish.